Welcome once again to the Linux Gaming News Punch. This is episode 18, now coming to you on Monday because honestly doing it on a weekend wasn't great for me. Everyone needs a break, so it's going to be Monday from now on. Anyway, on to your weekly roundup. First, I'll do my usual thing of starting with the bad news. Well, I'm not really sure this is the best term to use here, but here goes. Canonical confused and surprised everyone with the announcement of the end of 32-bit support for Ubuntu, giving everyone until Ubuntu 19.10, which is supposed to release in October, only around four or five months to prepare. That's pretty ridiculous, even if it had been discussed for some time before. That's a seriously ridiculously short roadmap. Unfortunately, this then led a Valve developer to announce on Twitter that Steam would no longer support or recommend Ubuntu going from Ubuntu 19.10 and onwards and they would be looking to support a new distribution. Canonical then later sort of walked back a little and said that the 32-bit libraries would only be frozen, and then today they've got a brand new statement out saying that select 32-bit libraries will be included, so they've done a pretty big U-turn there. It's an absolute mess. However, I am thankful that the Ubuntu team did listen to the immense amount of feedback, but this situation was terrible. There was no clear communication, no clear roadmap, and they do need to do better. You can't just go from discussing things on mailing lists, having no actual plan or roadmap in place, to then dropping an absolute bombshell of you've got four or five months to prepare for 32-bit to basically go. It will be interesting to see if Valve go back to recommending Ubuntu or if they continue on to another Linux distribution. We'll just have to wait and see on that. But back to games now. First, Streets of Rogue, one of my absolute favourite indie games, is finally leaving early access on July 12th. This is almost a masterpiece, honestly. It's completely ridiculous in so many ways. It's an action roguelite that pulls in inspiration from The Binding of Isaac, Nuclear Throne, and Deus Ex, and it manages to be very unique. Instead of running through dungeons, you have a big active city, multiple classes to pick, all with different abilities, and the chaos that can happen as you travel through is amazing. And a lot of that is thanks to the AI, which in a lot of ways is actually quite smart and also pretty hilarious. If you've not played Streets of Rogue, I urge you to go and take a look. Recently, we also had Valve officially release the open beta of their new strategy game, Dota Underlords. It's a standalone version of Dota 2's auto chess game mode. And this one's interesting because Valve did try to pull in the developer of Auto Chess to work with Valve, but they declined. And now Auto Chess is going to be exclusive to the Epic Store. Obviously, that didn't stop Valve with Dota Underlords now out, and it's seeing a pretty great adoption from players. And me, I love it. I've got tens of hours in it, and it's now stuck into my regular rotation of games to play. Seems it's the same way for many others as well. It's already managed to hit over 200,000 people playing online at the same time. That's incredible. Is this Valve getting back into the action? We'll have to wait and see, but they're doing well with Dota Underlords so far. Here's one for those of you who like your strategy games, as Deadlick Entertainment are working on a brand new one, and it's called A Year of Rain. The awesome news for us is that it is coming to Linux. When I spoke to them originally, they didn't have a decision made on it, but they've said recently, yes, it is coming to Linux. What I like about A Year of Rain is that it won't be focusing on large-scale messy battles. Instead, it will have a focus on powerful hero units. It sounds like it might be a lot of fun, but we've only seen screenshots of it so far, so we can't really make any kind of judgment on it. Still, we lack a lot of traditional real-time strategy games, so I'm quite hopeful for this one, especially since we'll have a story campaign to play for as well, and A Year of Rain will release sometime this year. Also, we recently had the colourful city builder Islanders release officially for Linux. I purchased this one personally as soon as I saw it and it is great. It's nothing like other city builders. There's no economy to worry about, no civilian needs or anything like that. Instead, everything you do is based on a score. So the more buildings you can fit onto your tiny island, the bigger your score. And then the more you unlock until you can move to another island. Thanks to this score system, Islanders does play a little bit like a chilled out puzzle game with a city builder theme, so it's nothing like a traditional city builder, but it's well worth playing. Also, Eagle Island deserves a mention this week, as it's now going to release with Linux support on July 11th. 
Eagle Island is a modern pixel art action platformer taking inspiration from roguelikes and metroidvanias. It does have a demo up, you can already try it and I urge you to, it's absolutely fantastic. The combat style was pretty amusing as well, as you have a pet owl which you launch at your enemies and power it up through upgrades and items you find as you explore. The art is just wonderful as well, pixel art doesn't have to be retro and Eagle Island is another that shows how beautiful it can actually be. Finally, Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney talked a little about Linux recently. Sweeney seems to think that Wine could actually help break the cycle of gaming being mostly done on Windows. And he even went as far as to mention that Easy Anti-Cheat, the team behind that which Epic Games do now own, are continuing to work on Linux support. And he even mentioned about support for Wine as well. So that's great. Because if that does actually materialise, having Easy Anti-Cheat supported in Wine, so then Steam Play would make tons of games overnight just work. So hopefully they're not just empty words we'll have to wait and see just like everything else that's all for this week though thanks to the Ubuntu news it's been a bit of a whirlwind I've struggled to keep up with it all honestly anyway thanks for listening come and say hi on gamingonlinux.com and check out our daily news I will see you again on Monday next week bye bye for now